greetings beautiful people how are you praise jesus praise jesus i hope you're doing well i hope you're enjoying life everywhere you are uh, in the midst of all challenges all around uh, difficulties all around but i praise jesus that in everything we always come out victorious we always come out glorious we always come out so beautiful and so <coughs> Uh, 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 joyful because in every situation we go through in every uh, uh, condition in every tough you know uh, uh, situation that we go through God gives us the ability to go through it all and persevere and uh, uh, and be able to go to the other side of life because we are not created to suffer like I told you last time in our Bible class where man was never created to suffer. Never, never. He was created. You were created. I was created to enjoy life and life abundantly. Praise Jesus. So welcome to I Am Who I Am Bible class. I am Brother James, Minister Tayambe Things, and I'm so delighted today to come back to our Bible class. And I always say this, uh, we're intending to make this into a Bible college and one time when we will be you know sitting you know physically studying I'm sure people will you know understand more about you know what it means to be a believer who sits at the feet of Jesus every day not a believer who just you know uh, uh, survives and lives by the words of Preachers, prophets, evangelists, pastors, uh, apostles. No, 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 no. A believer who sits at the feet of Jesus. I always tell you, for you to live the very life of God, you must sit and study the word. You must sit and search out the life that is in the word. Not just knowledge, not just understanding, but life. Amen. And so, dear beloved, before we kick into the word, before we, got into, we get into the word, uh, we go into the word. Let's take a moment and pray, and then we we go to what brought us here today. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless your name, O oh Lord, for what you have done and for what you are doing. Our eyes have seen, our bodies have felt. We have experienced you, Lord. We have seen you, O oh Lord. We have seen you in our lives, in every day, in every single moment of our lives, in every single, you know. Every single part of our lives, we have experienced you, Lord. We know that full well, that you have been with us, that you have been there. You have been our pillar, you have been our shepherd, you have been, and yes, you are always there. You are always there for your people. And Father, as we sit and born on the word, as we sit and study the word, as we sit to listen to your voice from your word, O oh God, I pray that revelations will flow freely. I pray that wisdom will flow freely. I pray that life will flow freely. I pray that joy will flow freely. I pray that peace will flow freely. In the mighty name of Jesus. And to everyone listening to the words. Father, I pray that as you have been with us. That as you have been, you know, uh, pondering. And, 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 and as we've been pondering and as we've been sitting. And you've been always there for us. Standing right in the midst every single time. Father, I thank you that as we sit on the word, life is flowing out in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah, and so, brothers and sisters, I promised that um, uh, we're going to go book by book. And uh, uh, we have been in Genesis. We have been studying Genesis, the Genesis of all things. You know, the beginning of all things. And to give you uh, a small recap, a small uh, summary of what we studied last time. We studied about the creation of the heavens and the, and the things that God filled in the heavens. Uh, the creation of the earth and what God filled on the earth. You know, uh, the land he filled with, with plantations. Uh, and... Uh, we, we, we also uh, saw how God, uh, uh, you know, uh, does not create things empty. Oh, God. Our God does not create us empty. He creates 
and he feels. And I asked the question, what did he feel in a man? And so I went on and showed you what he filled in you. I showed you that you are filled with his very power, with his very glory, with his, with, with his very virtues, with his very, very being. Yeah, he created you in his own image, in his own likeness. Praise Jesus. Oh, and he blessed you in his praises. And I'm going to show you, to show you more about that today as we go into uh, uh, the next uh, uh, part of this teaching. And then I showed you how he created you with his own hands. Spiritual hands in Genesis 1. And natural hands. His, his, his natural hands. Are you hearing me, brothers and sisters? Uh, his natural hands. Because God became natural. God became flesh. And man is dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. We have seen his glory. This is Brother John testifying. Saying we have seen. John 1.14 Oh, the word became flesh. The word became flesh. God made you with his own hands. Praise Jesus. Some as David understood it well in Psalm 139 verse 14. He says, Oh, I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise your name, Lord. I praise you, O oh Lord. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Awesome. Awesome is your hand. Great is the works of your hands. God's hands. God's hands. Remember I always say this. He did not just create. You know. You and you just go like that. Without. You knowing. What is in him. And so in Genesis chapter. One, uh, chapter 2 verse uh, 19 I showed you how God brought all the beasts of the field all the birds of the air all these animals he brought them to the man and the Bible says to see what he would name them it was not like God did know that he was able to name them that the man was able to name them no God knew he's all knowing he is all knowing he declared the end from the beginning. He knew. Day one he is. Oh he was. Oh he is and he will ever be. He is out of time. And he governs what is in time. And the other day in the teachings. I also showed you how. He is the one who created time. Before he creates anything. In the beginning of what? In the beginning of all things. God created time. Are you healing brothers and sisters? And then in time he creates all these things and he reached to man and he filled them all. And when he reached to man, he gave his very best. Oh, hallelujah. When he reached to man, Adam, when he reached to you, he gave his very best. You are fearfully, fearfully, fearfully made. Fearfully. Go and think about that verse. Some. 139 verse 14. Oh, hallelujah. You are fearfully, 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 fearfully made. Fearfully made. Wonderfully made. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, God creates this man and he fills him with his very glory, with his very being, with his very virtue, with his very power, with his very character, with his very wisdom. And then he calls all these animals for the man to have a platform to demonstrate his knowledge and his wisdom. Are you hearing? God's knowledge and God's wisdom and God's power in this man. Praise Jesus. His wisdom, his knowledge, his character in this man. In me, brothers. He was delighted when he was going to make this thing. Praise Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He was delighted. He was pleased. He was, oh, Marantek, it was his pleasure. Praise Jesus. Ah, we come into those words. Delight, pleasure. Praise Jesus. Ah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And so, he brings these animals 
the beasts of the field, the birds of the air. He brings them to the man to see what he would name them. And then, whatsoever he named, there he was his name. Oh, Raya Kante. Hey, whatever. If he said lion, lion was lion forever. If he said cow, cow was cow forever. If he, were, if he said cat, cat was cat forever. If he said woman, woman, ah, praise Jesus. He reaches to his own and he named him and he named her woman. Praise Jesus because he was going to them to be the mother of all the living, to be the source of all the living. Ah, ah. That was that's too much in Genesis. Praise Jesus. And so, God knew that this man had the ability, the qualities of God. The qualities of God. You have the qualities of God. You don't have the qualities of this world. You don't have the qualities of the devil. No. I have the very qualities of God. You have the very qualities of... That's why you are fearfully. Ah, ah, the very qualities of God. When, oh Jesus, when God created this man, this man never knew. He never had a clue about what was in him. He came to realize he's fearfully and wonderfully made. All these animals fear him. All these Beasts of the field and birds of the air, all these things, all these animals fear him. Because something was placed in him. Animals fear humans. We don't fear humans. Uh, animals, sorry. We don't fear humans. Humans, the humans that have become uh, animals. Some people say that uh, now the most scary animal is human. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Now the most scary animal is human. A human is not an animal. Praise Jesus. He's not an animal. They can be so beastly. They can be so, uh, uh, so wicked. They can do wicked because the wicked one entered. We're going to talk about that. And so, dear beloved, what happened is after God filled this man with his own character, he brought all these things for the man to know, for you to know. When there's no darkness, you will not know that you are a son of light. Without problems and you are a problem solver, you will not know you are a problem solver. Without troubles and you are a trouble solver, you will not know you have the ability to solve troubles. Praise Jesus. Hey, hey. People couldn't know. Solomon had received infinite wisdom. If there was no troubles among all Israel's, Israelites, and he solved all their troubles and all their problems. Praise Jesus. Where there is no darkness, there is no place for light. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so, beloved, the man is created in God's own image and after his own likeness. And then God brings all these things. The man realizes he is as powerful as God. He is as awesome as God. He is as fearful as God. He is as wise as God. He is as authoritative as God. Oh, he is as infinite as God. He is as immortal, immortal. As God. He, he is as imperishable as God. He is spirit. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He is one with God. Praise the Lord. And so this man is created. And that is you. I'm talking about that's you. That's you. You are infinite. You are. Oh, hallelujah. Sons of the Most High. And so, beloved. The next thing you will see is, oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul. Mm -hmm. And then uh, God, after he created all this, and the man exercised the authority and the power, and then he began 
to live the life, the gift of life that God gave him. But there was something, there was something else that was waiting him right there. And so, uh, after the man had been demonstrating the character of God, had been living in the praises of God, suddenly something happened. But before we go to that something, I want us to look at what was life like before Adam and Eve realized, came to the knowledge. Not fall. Thousands of thousands of years, scholars have said fall of man. Fall. Fall from where to where? Fall. <laughs> Christians fall. Fall from where to where? No. It's only the devil who fell from heaven. <laughs> Fallen angels fall from where to where? Some is David goes deeper and says, where can I go? Where can I go? And this is a man of the Old Testament. He says, where can I go? Where can I flee from your spirit? Where? Oh, ha. we're going to understand something in Genesis. The Genesis of all things. The Genesis of all things. The Genesis of the knowledge we come into Genesis 3 is not a fall. It's not a fall. It's not a fall. Fall from where to where? I said what the devil took was not the life of God. Why? The man never had the life of God. He only had the breath of life, not eternal life. Hello, we here to see this. I'm going to read you scriptures. What life looked like. I'm telling you, before we go to what men call fall, and it's not fall. I'm going to tell you what it is. And it's not fall. It's not fall. Hey, hey. Oh, hey. We don't fall. And that word fall, I'm actually going to show you what it means. Because it is, in Hebrews, it's there. In Hebrews 4, it's there. Fall, falling away from the knowledge. Uh, Praise Jesus. Hey, we don't fall. We don't. Hey, where can I run away from his spirit? From his lekantananosh. From his eye. Hallelujah. Remember he's a watcher. He's a watchman. He watches over you. Praise Jesus. Sometimes we are separated from God. I'm far away from God. <laughs> far away? No. Far away from where to where? He is omnipresent. He is omnipotent. He's everywhere. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, that's my God. And listen to this, brothers. Listen, let me show you what life looked like before a man comes to the knowledge of good and evil. Not fall. Not fall. Please not fall. When you, when you hear the word fall, it means getting off. Fall is getting off something. Getting off. Mm -hmm. if, 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 I, if I let, if, if this phone goes off my, my hand right now, I see it falls down. I see but what people call fall, I'm going to show you. God, there was. He kept, he kept living with them as a matter of fact. <laughs> as a matter of fact, he provided a sacrifice. He provided a sacrifice. He knew this natural life was going to require shedding of blood. He knew. He was predestined, he had predestined life to be that way. For where there is no forgiveness of where, where there is no shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Praise Jesus. And listen to this, brothers. Listen, Genesis, I want you to go to Genesis chapter 
4, chapter, chapter 2, sorry, chapter 2, verse 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The Bible says, The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. The breath of life. The breath of life. The breath of life. And the man became a living being. The breath of life. The breath of life. The breath of life. If you research that word breath, it will show you, if you research on that word, the breath of life. The breath of life was, uh, it was, it was, uh, God put a, a temporal substance in this man that made him. A temporal substance. Are you hearing me? Because we, 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 we breathe in intervals. Are you hearing me? We, we breathe temporarily. You see, it's, it's on and off. It's on and off. It's on and off. I see. In and out. I see. And that breath of life, that if you don't have that one, if your heart is not pumping the, the, the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, you see what even produces this air, it is oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Are you seeing? And there, what God put in him, are you hearing me? It was the blood. Because you can, this body can be like this without blood, but if it, it stays long without the pumping of that blood, that's when you become a dead body. But it's a body. So God put this, put, put the bread now. God had put, you see, God had put red blood, red Adama. Ad Adam means red Adama. Adam means man. Red blood. Are you see, God had formed this flesh and put blood in it. And then this blood couldn't be, couldn't be activated. Are you see, without the breath, this breath, this air which we breathe. Are you see, and this air which we breathe, is, this is so, it's so shocking. It's so funny that the source of this breath this we breathe is from plants. It's, it's, it's crazy. Hmm? Plants breathe in deox uh, de carbon dioxide and then they breathe out oxygen. And we breathe in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. <laughs> this is anyways, I'm giving some chemistry and biology here. But hmm. But as, as, as a man is, you know, a, 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 a being but not living, he was just there. He was just there, just like, you know, a, a substance that has no, you know, breath of life in it. And so when God breathed into the blood, I see, when God breathed into the blood, then the man became a living being. God breathed the breath of life. In other words, it was temporal life. In other words, God created man to live temporal on earth. He knew it. God created man to live temporal on earth. But he is, in Genesis 1, he is permanent. Praise Jesus. The man in Genesis 1 is different from the man in Genesis 2. Genesis 2, it is the soul part. Let me, let me just give you a highlight of Genesis 1, 2, 3. Genesis 1 is the spirit man. Genesis 2 is soul man. Genesis 3 is flesh man. That's where you see trouble is in Genesis 3. And so, within Genesis, Genesis 2, Genesis 2, God makes the soul. The body to life. In other words, it is, it is a living being because it has a breath of life. Are you seeing? Because a man who does not have a breath of life is a dead body, but still a body as well. Praise Jesus. Only that because that body is temporal without the life in it, that's why it perishes away. 
That's why when the man is buried, the body perishes. The, even the, 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 the bones perish and they become ashes and even the ashes disappear. Praise Jesus. Amen. Let's take a break and then come back to the part of the Genesis 3. Welcome back to I Am Who I Am Bible class. Yes, uh, as I told you, as I told you, um, Genesis 2, the man becomes a living being. God breathed into his nostril. Let's not, uh, the, 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 the nostrils, the, these ones, these, these, the, the north, this one, this thing. When he breathed into this thing, because the man was not going to only breathe from his mouth, he, breathed, he had to breathe from his nostrils. Why? That's where, anyways, let's, let's not go to science. Let's not go to biology. Uh, let's go to uh, the spiritual biology. Amen. <laughs> and so, dear beloved, listen to this. After God created the man and he formed him, after he created the man in Genesis chapter 1, he, he forms him in Genesis 2, he breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and then after he breathed the breath of life into his, into his nostrils, that I want you, you to clearly have this in mind. Every person on earth has the breath of life, but not eternal life. Just as Adam there, he had eternal life. So, so he had, he did not have eternal life. He had a breath of life, a temporal life. That word breath is temporal. Breathing in and out. You are in time now, but you shall once come out of time. That's when we breathe in and out. Hello? <laughs> in other words, we came in time, but we will want one time, another time, uh, we will go back out of time in Genesis 1. Genesis 1 is out of time. Praise Jesus. It is the beginning of time, but that time as well in Genesis 1, God gave it, you know, God gave it intervals. God was saying, okay, there was day, there was, uh, there was morning, there was evening. There was day, there was night. In Genesis 1. And so, as God was creating. And then, and then in Genesis chapter 2, now you see God. He creates, he creates the man. He forms the man. And then after he forms him, he breathed, he breathed the breath of life into his nostril. And then the man begins to experience the temporal life. Now, let me show you this. The temporal life, that's why I say we don't fall away. We don't fall away. The temporal life was sustained by the presence of God. I repeat, the temporal life was sustained, was, oh, oh my God. Oh, praise Jesus. The temporal life was sustained by the presence of God. Hallelujah. Just like these men of Israel, they are brought in the wilderness and they are sustained by God. Remember, we are in this world and we are sustained by God because it's a temporal journey. Oh, this is too much. I don't know how I can... Anyway, we will come to this clearly. Just like you see the children of Israel are taken out of Egypt. They are, they are in the wilderness and in the wilderness, remember, we are all in the wilderness. That experience in the wilderness of Israel was a picture of every man who will ever be born. You're born out of darkness. You're born in darkness. And God takes you out of darkness. And then after he takes you out of darkness, he sustains you in the darkness. You are of the world, but not of the world. As he's sustaining you in this world, what sustains you is his presence in this world. For, I, for he is with us until the end of the world. He is with us. Praise the Lord. Now, listen to this. Let me show you that he was the man. 
I, I was telling you before we go to Genesis 3, and actually I think Genesis 3, we're going to go into Genesis 3 in another, in another teaching. Because I had to make sure you need to understand that the life Adam had was not eternal life. The life Adam had was a temporal life because he had a breath, a breath in him, a breath of life. In other words, was a copy, a copy, not an original life, a copy of life. Are you hearing me? It was a breath of life. It's a copy. It's not original. Are you hearing me? Because this life we live here, it is a picture of the life that we must live in heaven. And that's why when you are born again, you experience eternity on earth. When you're not a born again, you experience hell on earth. Because that's why everything is sorrowful. Everything is fearful. Everything is worry. Everything is anguish. Everything is problem after problem. Why? You are living hell on earth. That's why him who doesn't believe stays condemned. Him who doesn't believe, the one who brought life on earth. The one who brought eternal life on earth. Eternal life was in Jesus Christ because you're going to see it here. Let me show you this. After You see, I'm going to show you. After God created the man, you're going to see in Genesis chapter 2 here, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, you're going to see clearly something on verse 8. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east. Comma. I always tell you, comma. You pause. Are you hearing, brothers? In Eden. In Eden. There he put the man he had formed. I said we are looking at what, what life looked like before what men call fall. Before what men call, are you hearing me? What people call fall. And it's not fall. It's coming to the knowledge of good and evil. And then you depart. When you come to the knowledge of good and evil, you depart from God's presence. And I'm now, I'm, and I'm now going to show you. Now, like I showed you that what sustained the man who had the breath of life in him, what sustained Adam, what sustains people here on earth even today, it is the presence of God. Because if God would take his spirit out of this world, if the Holy Spirit would depart from this world, the whole world becomes a mess instantly. You immediately you see, you see the picture, the exact, the exact picture of Genesis 1, 2. You see it. Praise Jesus. If the Holy Spirit would, be, would, de would depart, if he would depart, oh my God. Hey, that's why when you see in Genesis 5, when God says, my spirit shall not contend with man anymore. When the spirit of God departed, immediately Sodom and Gomorrah. Hey, and the reason why we cannot have a Sodom and a Gomorrah again, God came. Hey, the God of Abraham, he came. Oh my God. He couldn't allow evil to take over on earth. He couldn't. He's always trying right and left to rule the world. He can never rule it. He can never. Unless James is not on earth. Devil, you cannot. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Mention your name. Unless you believe, her, you are not on earth. Unless you who have eternal life in you, you are not on earth. Unless you who is the light of the world, you are not on earth. Unless you who is the salt of the earth, you are not on earth. Unless you who is a peacemaker, you are not on earth. That's when he can mess up. That's when he can do whatever he is able to do. But as long as you are here. Praise Jesus. And now listen to this. What sustained the man with the temporal life that he had was the presence of God. And let me show you the presence in this very verse that I just read you. Genesis 2.8, the Bible says, Now the Lord God planted a garden, 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 a garden, a garden. Remember there is a world, but there is a garden. My father is the garden. Oh, my father, oh, my father, he is the vine. Oh, he is the vine. He is the vine. He is the vine. Hey! Praise Jesus. He planted, God planted a garden for his praises. 
God planted a garden. Hey! God had planted a garden. Think about it. God planted a garden. God planted a garden. Remember, he had made he had he had made all kinds of trees. He had made plantations. He had made all these things. And he planted a garden somewhere. Oh, praise Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. Listen to this. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east. Now the, there's a, a comma. The, now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east. The Lord God had planted a garden in the east. Remember the world has east, west, south, north, and central. Now look at this. Are you hearing me? <laughs> in the east. Of the universe. Of the whole world. Of the whole earth. Their God. You know what he did? Praise Jesus. Their God. Planted a garden. Now. Comma. In the east. God planted a garden in his praises. The word Eden means praises. Many scholars will tell you, are you hearing me? The word in Eden means pleasure, means delight. Are you hearing me? Now, and in this garden of Eden, look, look at verse 9. And the Lord God, after he planted that garden in Eden, in his presence. Let me show you what he did. Next. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees. Sorry, on verse 8, before verse 9. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. God, come on. People, I want you to look at this. There's a whole world. Within the whole world, God, God planted. You see, that planting looks like today, God plants you. Praise Jesus. Psalmist David, the book of Psalms. A man who sings and praises the Lord day in and day out. He says, they are like a tree. I am like a tree. Planted. <laughs> By the streams. One day I will come and talk about those streams. Planted by the streams. God planted a garden in the east of the whole universe. And in that east of the whole universe, he flamed. He planted. And after he planted this, and after he planted this garden, listen to these brothers and sisters. He placed... He brought the man. No. There is outside and there is inside. Praise Jesus. You are in this world but not of the world. It means there is a world you live in. And that world is his presence. And his presence is not outside. His presence is in Eden. In Eden is he delights in your mind. He delights in your soul. <laughs> Praise Jesus. God delights in the thoughts of the people that worship him. God is pleased with the thoughts that worship him. God delighted in Christ. God was pleased with Christ. The word Eden means presence. And most of the scholars, they say it is delight. It is, it is, uh, it is delight. It is pleasure. But it is much more than that. Because when Adam came to the knowledge of good and evil, he was kicked out of the praises. He was taken out, not fall. Hello? There's a difference between, are you seeing, falling down and going backward. Are you hearing me? Backward or, 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 or going forward. Going forward. 
Praise Jesus. And going backward does not mean looking back. Going back and looking back is different. Hey, <laughs> hello. Looking back and going back is different. I can go back with my own back. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Anyways, let's not go there. Um, falling, I will come to the fall part, uh, uh, what people call a fall uh, 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 in the next session. But today I want to show you what life looked like. So, what life looked, looked, like, looked like in in Genesis 2 before the man loses, before the man lost the praises in him. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. And the praises was equal to the wisdom. The presence of God is equal to the wisdom of God. That's why immediately even the power can't be, can't be, uh, they can't be, uh, the power can't be put to effect. The power never left. But something had left. That's why you will see in the whole Old Testament, you're going to see men who demonstrated the power of God. And it was not the power that would it was not that the power would come from heaven and then come to work. No, the power was already in them. It was only ignited by the presence of God. The word of the Lord came to me. The spirit of the Lord came upon a person. And then the sweet spirit of God ignites, activates the power, and then the person begins to do wonders just as it is in genesis 2 19 when the man began to do wonders praise jesus and so dear beloved i want to show you this the man was sustained every one of us is sustained by the presence of god now there is now uh, uh, being sustained by the presence of god and not benefit the presence of god in your time of need Praise Jesus. So, you see, a man, the presence left in conscious, but the presence never left in the reality of a man. As a matter of fact, the reality of a man, God was ever there. I mean, in the reality. In our realities every day, you see God. Even a wicked person, I'm telling you. God protects, God gives way to the wicked and the, and the righteous. When the flood gates of heaven showers the world with goodness and mercy, it does not discriminate. The goodness of God does not discriminate. Are you seeing? But there are those among all those people, there are people who not only now, not only now receive the mercy of, mercy of God, there are people who receive the life and they begin to live the life constantly. Praise Jesus. And so, God created this man. And then, he is temporal. Adam, the life we live here on earth, are you seeing, was predestined to be temporal. This is even before the man comes to the knowledge of good and evil. Not fault. Not fault. No, coming to the knowledge of of good and evil, of which that is what, uh, what I'm going to deal with in the next teaching uh, of our next uh, 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 segment. And so, listen to this. God, as I come to the conclusion, God sustained Adam by his presence. And when Adam ate on the tree, and Eve, when they ate on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's when they were taken out of the presence of God. Because within the garden, there were trees. Because that's what you see on verse 9. From verse, this is Genesis 2 still. I'm showing you what life looked like. In Genesis 2 before the man comes to the knowledge of good and evil what many scholars what many you know uh, preachers uh, say that it's fall and it's not fall I will make one day I will come and teach on that clearly and show you how it's never a fall where can you go <laughs> uh, 
that is far away from God. <laughs> Nowhere. He's everywhere. <laughs> Once predestined, always predestined. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 can, you can go and ask uh, Jonah. Mm, go and ask Jonah. He thought uh, if he goes into the sea and the belly of the shark, maybe he's far away from God. Uh uh. No. <laughs> Where can you go? Nowhere. Fall? No. Praise Jesus. And the Lord God, now you see after Genesis 2 8, where man is placed in the presence of God. So that the presence would sustain his temporal life. Now listen to this. Verse 9, the Bible says, The Lord God made all kinds of trees to grow out of the ground. This is what I'm going to deal with in the next teaching. And the Lord God made all kinds, tree, kind, uh, kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees, all kinds of trees. The Lord God, I see, made all kinds of trees. There are three kinds of trees. And I will explain to you what are these trees. People think they are just trees, trees, trees. No, 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 no. No, they are not. Hello? <laughs> Hello? These, these are not just trees that had fruits. Mm -mm. We'll come to that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh my God. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. Full stop. That was one kind of tree. Another one was, in the middle of the garden, in the middle of the garden, Christ is always in the middle. <laughs> in the middle of the garden, Christ is always in the middle. Mm. In the middle of the garden, where the tree of life, in the middle of the garden, in the middle of the garden that he had created, in the middle of the garden that he had planted, was the tree of life. Woo! The hidden glory creation now revealing you, my Christ, the tree of life. Now listen to this. And the tree, in the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God himself, that's where we're going, I'm going to show you that it's not about a fall. It's not fall. God himself created the tree of knowledge of good and evil because God and the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, And the Lord God formed all kinds of trees out of the ground. All kinds of trees out of the ground. Trees that were good for food and pleasing to the eye. That is, that, that is one. Two, in the middle of the garden, God planted another tree, the tree of life. Two. Three, God planted also in the same garden, in the same garden hallelujah the world begins with a garden and ends with a city in the same garden God put the tree God made up come out of the ground the tree of knowledge of good and evil so our next teaching is on this tree of good and evil that brought trouble ah when the man came to the knowledge of this tree, my God, <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, God became God, praise Jesus, yes, man lived what was predestined for him, every one of us, God knows why he brought us all this far, why he brought us into this world. No one of us is a mistake. Everything is 
in his plan. Everything is set in his plan. Praise Jesus. And so, God created the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil. God created, the Lord God created the knowledge, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, God created, God authored the, the knowledge of good, knowledge, knowledge of good and evil. But I want, you to show the, uh, I want to show you this as I conclude. I want you to see how uh, life looked like as I conclude in, uh, in this teaching. In Genesis 2, 25, look. The man and his wife, 2, 25. The man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. The man and his wife, they were both naked and they felt no shame. So, what activated the shame is the knowledge of good and evil that came to their conscious, of which that's why we're going to deal with in the next teaching. You're blessed as you keep pondering on the word. You're blessed as you keep sitting on the word. You're blessed as you go in and go out. For he says, I come to give life and life abundantly. He's the good shepherd who goes before his sheep and they go in and out and find pasture. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you and he cares for you and he's watching over your life. May he restore every single thing that was predestined for you into your present time now.